Something I love about mixing is you could be doing this for so long, like an Andrew Sheps, right? And he'll get an idea from talking to somebody that he winds up implementing on a lot of his stuff just from having a conversation. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not, but in this specific interview, Dave Pensato talks to Andrew Sheps about dither. And this he gave him, him an idea, and he gave me an idea, and I never really used it in this way before, but I started messing with it, and I thought it was interesting, the, the concept. Whenever you're mixing in the box especially, anytime you can add a little more harmonic distortion or character in any way, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And what we figured out from watching this, when I say we, I mean me and Andrew Sheps, is that Dave Pensato had a very creative idea for how to use dither, and I want to share it with you guys. So check this out. This is fair use for teaching purposes. The stuff I do is noisy, so I'm not worried about the very ends of reverb tails, which is where, that's why dither is there, because it covers quantization error. It randomizes half a bit high your signal so that you don't get repeating errors that you can hear when things get quiet. So, I mean, Wikipedia will tell you that's what it that. is a lot better. I mean, I'm not saying this for you, this is for, for the rest of the peeps, but basically I print my main mixes that are going off to mastering 32 bit. So I leave the dither off. So even though they're limited, I leave the dither off because it's 32 bit. Cause if you dither, you're dithering to a fixed point thing. You're making it 24 bit. So you're losing this, um, 24 bit or even 16, you're losing the idea of the floating point bit inside the waveform. So mm -hmm. I just don't dither, but the, I mean, in terms of, like general advice, which wouldn't be for you because you know this, you definitely never want to dither more than once because you're just bringing up your noise floor. The point is to have a set noise floor that's exactly a half a bit because that will randomize the stuff that happens when things get really, really quiet. My mixes are never quiet. So I don't, uh, it's it's all, it's all sort of irrelevant to me. I, I Check this out. I, I know, Check out what happens I, here. I don't know, but I, 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 I'm aware of what you're saying. But when I tried it, I tried it on uh, on a, a Pro L2 by FabFilter. And I, uh, I I put the dither on 18-bit, and I swear to you, my mid-range got clear. I swear to you. I'll send you the I'll send Look, you the I, I believe it, because if you think about it, I mean, anything that changes the signal is distortion, right? So you're actually adding a little bit of harmonic distortion and it could be that it focuses the mids in that plugin. I mean, that's, all of this stuff is always good. It's always something to try. And so if that's what you're getting out of that dither, that's awesome. And probably if you dither to well, 20 or 24 bit, it's gonna to be too subtle. The fact that you're doing it 18 yeah. bit is you're well, doing it at well. half a bit of 18 bits yeah. worth of dynamic range where you're actually gonna hear it. Let me let me clarify. Um, I don't know that I don't know that that your mother or your girlfriend could hear the difference, but I could hear the difference. No, but you're um, feeling it, aren't you? It's not it's not like you're going to hear it on an oscilloscope. It's that you feel like your mid range is there. So yeah, yeah. And that's interesting. Oh, well, I hadn't I thought like, of doing it at a lower yeah. at a lower bit depth. So I'm actually going to mess with that tomorrow. Yeah, because I've never read I've never read anywhere yet. Where where it was used for EQing or for, for vibe enhancement. But I love the idea. But, I mean, because um, you think about people who, who really sort of love the old, uh, like 80s and 90s rack mount reverbs, the first digital reverbs. But what those mm -hmm. had that were awesome were weird A to Ds and D to As. And so it's the sound of that conversion and the filters they had on the way in and out. That's what made them so cool and what makes them so hard to emulate. Because I don't know that people are emulating the A to Ds and D days when they say, hey, we've got the algorithms from this reverb or that reverb and they're doing the 224 and the 480. And like what was amazing about those were the converters as well as the reverbs. What I gained from this is so multifold, right? We, what we have here is it's, it's part of the reason I think I'm never really happy with some of these emulation reverbs was explained so clearly. The converters that take the signal from analog to digital, which then get fed through the reverb and then back from digital to analog to go back into the, you know, the console or in our case, back into Pro Tools, 
those rack mount units sounded so cool because of those converters. So this explains how conversion plays a role in what you're listening to and how good converters will definitely change the sound over bad converters, you know, or vice versa. And it doesn't have to be good or bad. It's just going to be different from one converter to another. There is a sound difference built into the converters. It proves that. And it also says this concept of, you know, that you could learn something that like Andrew started out, if you notice, he very quickly said, you never want to use dither more than once because it's going to bring up your noise floor and who would want a higher noise floor? Followed by Dave saying, hang on a second. It made, it sounded like my mid range was more focused when I added dither you know, in multiple t ways. He did, Dave's talking about adding it. He made a hilarious joke right before the clip about how he uses dither on his salad. He uses it in his cereal. He uses dither on his pancakes. He was, he's putting it on everything, right? And Andrew, you know, says, you don't want to use it more than once. But Dave's like, hang on. So like the concept. And then Andrew was able to, to be like, you know what? I can understand why that would work. So do you see the amount of pivoting happening? Just Andrew's working it out in his brain how even though he thought it could be a bad thing, it actually could be a positive. So there's just so much to be said for this. To be a good mixer, you need to be like that. You need to, even though you could have your belief of this is the way it works because that makes sense, you need to be willing to see the other side of that coin always. And in this case, like when given an explanation that may have some weight to it you are able to flip to the other side and really that allows you to improve so this is the perf just right here this clip is the perfect example of how to be a great mixer wrapped up in this one concept that andrew hadn't heard before and neither had i i never heard this but when i heard this i figured i need to share it with you guys because anything like this that's something other people aren't talking about and aren't doing and is like the furthest thing from what people say, you know, that that's always what I find to be the, the greatest parts about these interviews is the little things that that when you're super attuned to detail what you can pull out, there could be something there because that's usually the stuff that never gets talked about. So anyway, really cool concept that I'm gonna wind up trying not only on guitars, but like Dave is doing, he's using it on his drum bus, He's basically adding a little bit of distortion with dither instead of with a distortion plugin, instead of with sans amp, instead of with decapitator, instead of with whatever. He's doing it in his own way and it's working for him. And note what he said. He said 18 bit. Also note what Andrew said, because there's so much learning to be done here. If you've never worked at 32 bit float, what you basically know is that just by working at 32-bit float, you're never really clipping anything. So it's like a fail safe to work in that way. But once you start using dither, you're basically fixing the, the bit rate. You're fix, it's no longer 32-bit float. It becomes, in Dave's case, 18-bit if he dithers to 18 bits. But the point is he's getting something from that that could very possibly make it feel better in the mid-range. There's this is what I'm saying about this is so much and notice Andrew Shep said it's not like you'll notice a huge difference on an oscilloscope, but you will feel the difference. So he's conceding, Andrew, that this possibly could be a great technique after he said it. Why would you want to do there more than once? You're just bringing up your noise floor. That is such an amazing. This was like mental jujitsu ju that was just done here. This whole thing was mental jujitsu and very cool that he was able to sort of, maybe even judo, he was able to turn it around and throw it on his head and now use it in towards his benefit. All right, so very cool. Also very cool for Dave. Think about this. Dave's been doing this forever, uh, forever. And what was he able to do? He's able to come up with something, you know, a couple of days ago, he says, that he feels is actually really helping what he's doing. And how long has he been doing this? So that should just give you this in my mind, that's a breath of fresh air. That means that we have the ability to constantly learn and constantly improve if we are constantly experimenting with all the tools we have at our disposal. Nothing is right. Nothing is wrong. It's all how you use it. All right. If you dig this, do me a favor. Slap a tool that you use. I want to hear something that's a little out of the box and a little extraordinary. Throw it in the comments. Maybe somebody hasn't heard of it. Maybe I haven't heard of it. Maybe I'd like to try it, all right? So, you know, I help you out. You help me out. 
Also, subscribe if you haven't already. Custom Cut Studios. My name's Evan Jaffe. You guys got this. Take it easy.